Thank you, Bethel, Bethel and, and uh, Dr. King. Uh, at this point, we're going to move on to our second uh, set of panelists. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce now Melinda Levon. Melinda Levon is a mother, midwife, and community organizer based in Lawrence, Kansas. She currently serves as the membership chair of uh, Lawrence Democratic Socialists of America. And she's on the general and second, general and second congressional district committees for the Kansas Democratic Party. Melinda was the chair of the Vote No Kansas uh, political action committee full of organizers from DSA, Sunrise, and she worked with a broad coalition of groups around the state to defeat the Kansas anti-abortion amendment in August. This next election cycle, Melinda's serving as the chair of the Progressive Caucus for the Kansas Democratic Party and as chair of the Vote Kansas uh, Political Action Committee. So please welcome uh, Melinda Levon. Thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, man, I have so many thoughts after listening to everybody this morning. Um, I've really appreciated how much uh, Martha, you were really specific when you were talking about what you were fighting for. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what I did this year and then tell you like what we're facing right here today, which is actually a housing crisis here in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, so, um, you know, since 2021, we knew these horrible abortion um, initiatives were going to be on our ballot in August. Um, we did a lot of rural organizing last year. Um, I live in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, you know, we only really have a, a couple of urban areas in the entire state of Kansas. Um, and, and I'm, I'm in one of the five. Um, and then the other hundred counties basically are pretty rural, um, in general. And so the organizing, the outreach, and sometimes those conversations have to look really different, um, than, um, what, you know, the kind of work sometimes you got to do in Los Angeles. My sister, baby sister Molly lives in LA. I love it there. Um, the uh, Vote No Kansas movement, uh, we were so excited to win almost two to one here in Kansas. Uh, there's really not that many Democrats in the state of Kansas. And I'll tell you, there aren't a lot of leftists uh, that were sprinkled across the state, um, but we're kind of concentrated generally up here in the Northeast. Our, our DSA chapter now has over 200 members in it. Um, and these are some active people. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud of all of them. Um, Unfortunately, we, we came to our attorney general's race this year and, you know, I, I get told a lot like, Melinda, I don't want to vote for a cop. I understand that. But if you're going to participate in the sheriff or the attorney general election, you have to decide if you, you know, want to participate in it or not and that kind of thing. And then who's going to be the best. And... You know, we, we kind of chose to stay out of the attorney general race, and right now we feel like it was a mistake. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Chris Kobach. He was the legal and financial advisor to the Build the Wall group. He's one of the most xenophobic, horrific white supremacists that we have in, in this country. And he is now going to be my attorney general for the next four years. Uh, he has promised to sue Joe Biden. I don't care if he sues Joe Biden, other than he's going to cost my state money. And there's people behind me a block away in the mud, and they are cold, and they have nowhere to go. You know, when we talk about fascism, Kansas is a big part of the problem, right? What do we have here in Kansas? We got oil and gas money. Like I tell younger people, I'm like, this is the, the stuff Papa Bernie's talking to you about. This is the oil and gas money we're talking about. Here in Kansas, we got the uh, Koch family, Charles Koch, um, and uh, they spend millions of dollars and they, they make up over half of ALEC's budget, ALEC, the American Legal Exchange Council. So some of those really most terrible bills where you think, oh my gosh, who could ever even write something like this? It's ALEC. That's where it came from. Um, so, uh, you know, I, the calls are coming from inside the house here in Kansas. Um, and, you know, we have not 
address the billionaires that we have here in the state and where their money goes, because it goes to attack us every day. Um, so, you know, there's there's a point where we're going to have to decide what's more uncool, running a campaign for an attorney general next time or spending another four years under Chris Kobach. And so, you know, we're going to have to do some soul searching going forward. Um, right now we have a several for a town of 91,000. Mm -hmm. We have about maybe 500 total completely unhoused people uh, here in our town. Um, the city has decided to not fund and really participate in our community houseless shelter. Um, they cut funding a few years ago and um, despite all that housing money during COVID, which really was just, let's face it, a landlord slush fund, right? In my, my county, $20 million went to landlords over the last couple of years. Uh, but now everybody's facing eviction, rising rates, and we still have hundreds of unhoused people in tents with no heat. It, it's 30 degrees. I am hovered over an electric heater, by the way. I mean, I'm, I'm freezing. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm inside. I have a place to live. Um, uh, so, you know, I've been all over the state. I've also been helping Kentucky and Montana. Shout out to everyone in Kentucky and Montana for beating their abortion initiative on their ballots there in November. Um, the, um, a lot of the DSA and um, other uh, leftist groups, I don't know who's watching TV right now, but. Um, <laughs> Somebody needs to mute themselves. We're not going to join Trump in his Well, I'll see if I can track them down and okay. mute them myself. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's okay. It happens. Um, well, and how many times do I start talking and I'm still on mute? So the opposite happens a lot, too. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, we, we've been focused on, on helping our comrades in other states stop those abortion ballot initiatives and, and uh, recovering from August um, and, and doing our best to elect uh, anyone that we could um, in November here in Kansas. It was uh, pretty rough. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I'm coming home. I just got elected to a, a county seat here with the Democrats, and uh, clearly I, I'm needed at home. But at the same time, we don't even have, we don't even know what we're asking for is what I'm trying to say right now. I don't, I don't know why um, our city and our county, especially with the revenues and the sales tax and the property tax we've brought in, there's no reason for this. And it doesn't have to be like this. Um, so I look forward to our city council races that are going to take place in 2023. Um, and especially here in Kansas, uh, we're also going to be participating in school board races. There's going to be all kinds of attacks on books and trans rights and things like that. Um, so this winter, we're, we're gearing up for that kind of thing, too, while we focus on the direct immediate needs of the people here in our community that are, are our neighbors. Um, and th their rights are being denied. Okay, thank you, Melinda. Um, yeah, I wanna thank you because one of the things that we've noticed during this election, all the time the, uh, the media kept telling us we can't uh, support both social issues and economic issues, that somehow they're, they're two different worlds and people, uh, and they said everybody's gonna vote against uh, Democrats because of inflation, which really wasn't even caused by Democrats. So, uh, but that proved to be untrue. And actually you're a perfect example of somebody who fights on the social issues front and also uh, fights on, on these, for these basic needs like housing. So uh, the next, um, uh, the next panelist I'd like to introduce is General Dogan. General Dogan has been a human rights organizer in the Los Angeles Community Action Network, LA CAN, for almost 20 years. He was raised on the same Skid Row streets that he now defends as a member of LA CAN. He's dedicated his life ever since to educating, uh, well, he, it said he, uh, he educated himself, um, 
while serving time in the California Department of Corrections and has dedicated his life ever since to educating others and organizing people to resist injustice and exploitation. With LA CAN, he's confronted the priorities, tactics, and the inhumanity of the Central City Association's business improvement districts in their campaign to displace the old Skid Row community and re rebuild downtown for the wealthy. So please welcome uh, General Doe. Revolutionary greetings. Thank you for having me. Peace. You got questions for me or you want me to just start off? Uh, so, just start off. We will have questions later for you and all the other panelists as we all get together. But uh, tell us a little bit about what's what's going on right now. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on. You know, just thank you for uh, being here. Uh, yeah, my name is General Dogon, and uh, I'm a fightback organizer on Skid Row with the uh, LA Can. And um, um, one of my jobs as a fightback organizer, most definitely. Is, uh, is, is to abolish the criminalization of homelessness in the city of Los Angeles and to monitor and document the city's efforts, right, to, uh, to solve the homeless crisis in home and, and house people. And I would tell you the last almost 18, 19 years has been a hell of a journey, right? Uh, but I will most definitely start off by saying that uh, one of my jobs is point man on our community watch team. As a fight back organizer, we believe we believe here at LA Can is to is to get up close and personal with the fight. That means entwining ourselves into the fight. And so we have a community watch team, uh, which I've been a point man on for the last by almost eight, 19 years. Uh, we go out and we 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 document interactions between uh, law enforcement and business improvement security guards. We also organize the uh, affected person on the ground into the fight. Right. That means we go into encampments. Uh, we do know your rights trainings. Uh, we politicize the encampments with signs and stuff like that. Uh, we also organize the homeless people to speak out, uh, to go to city council meetings, uh, to go to homeless and poverty community meetings, speak out. We also do what we call community lawyering. Uh, and that's um, once we get to the point to where it is, the city ain't moving, ain't doing nothing, they still criminalizing folks then. Uh, we bring in some lawyers and we introduce those on the ground that are affected uh, by the policy uh, to lawyers. Uh, most definitely, we've been involved uh, here in several lawsuits uh, uh, here against the city of Los Angeles. We won several lawsuits against the Business Improvement District. We won several lawsuits against the city, right? Uh, but the game of criminalizing homelessness continues, right? Uh, I would most definitely say, I could talk about the criminalization of homelessness from here to New Year's, you know, but to understand really the fight, right? You got to go back to the history of Los Angeles and you got to really understand it because uh, the criminalization of homelessness started in 1781 when the city was founded, right? Uh, I did research and timeline uh, and uh, I couldn't find a no part in history in which the city wasn't criminalizing homeless people, right? Uh, in fact, when you look at way back, you know, uh, 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 the, the county jail, wasn't created to house criminals in the city of Los Angeles. It was created to house what they call vagrants, right? Uh, we got to understand that uh, they have a street law uh, in LA. Uh, it's called 4118D. That's the old version of it. But it's the, the no sit, sleep, lie law, right? And it was created back way back in the Depression time, right? So how do you create laws like that? You know what I'm saying? doing times, you know what I'm saying? When people was at their greatest financial need, right? And then we found out that it goes even further than that to vagrants. They had law. It was illegal to be, be homeless. It was illegal to be, once you get so low on the totem pole, it was illegal, right, for you to, you know, uh, to be living on the streets, right? And so they created the county jail. The county jail was created, like I say, not for criminals, but the household people. The city's first chain gang was created, right? Uh, out of the homeless people, since they homeless people sitting in jail, they say, well, hey, you ain't got no job, right? You need a job to do, hey, take the sludge hammer, come on, get out of here and break some rocks, right? Uh, uh, like I would say, when you, when, you, when, you, when you understand, so there's a report uh, that I love that UCLA made, UCLA Law Skin University, the law school made, it's called The Making of a Homeless Crisis. I encourage people to read that report because it'll take you all the way from 1781 all the way up to where we currently are now, and then I could take over and start talking about the rest of the criminalization from that point on, right? 
And, and basically it all, it, I mean, it all starts with it's profit over people. Most definitely it's capitalism that's pushing the whole thing in the city of Los Angeles. The reason why come LA is the worst is in the nation. You gotta understand the reason why come they come in dead last in policy, right? Uh, is because where we are right here, right now. So LA is broken up into 15 council districts, right? Uh, so uh, council district downtown is council district 14. Uh, it's the most powerful council district. Downtown is where all the money is at. It's where the moolah is at. It's where CCA is at, Central City Association, which is the umbrella for all of the business improvement districts, right? And you got to understand the movement of the business improvement district, right? How they just barge into a community, right? And just take over and, and claim it as a business district, right? And start charging revenue, you know, for property right there, right? And so our, our nightmare started when the LA Lakers moved from Inglewood to downtown LA. When you look around the nation right now, you see that all the downtown areas are developing these sports stadiums and stuff like that, right? And with the sports stadiums comes condos, lofts, the LA Live, Starbucks, the walking of the $5,000 poodoo down the street and all that. It also comes with Bratton and his broken windows theory of policing, right? Uh, which they came here with, right? And for 10 years, Right, we dealt with Bratton and this theory of policing and our community watch team uh, at the time, uh, they, had, uh, they had brought in 110 extra police making Skid Row the most police community, not only in America, but second in the world of Baghdad was first. That's because they had active, uh, 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 the military was in the street actually, right, at the time. And so that was only, re only enforcement that was greater than I was in the world. Right, and for the, the next 10 years, they would proceed forward march to criminalize uh, uh, Skid Row. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the business improvement district was, was pushing this. Because when you look, the proof of the pie is, because when you look at all the other 15, through all the other 14 districts, right, you will see all the lawsuits that originated, right, I can call them all, from Justin all the way to the new one, LA Alliance case, with seven of them, right, in the last 20 years, LA been found guilty seven times in federal court in seven different cases. The policy of criminalizing homelessness has been ruled unconstitutional, all right? And so all of those lawsuits, except for one, Garcia versus the city. Let me see, it was Justin versus the city, Jones versus the city, Fitzgerald versus the city, uh, uh, Tony LeVan versus the city, called Mitchell versus the city, Garcia versus the city. Then they have a new case called the LA Alliance when even the businesses, you know, after the, the city working with the businesses, right? And, um, and, and doing all these favoritism for them at the moment that the city don't work with the business and start going against them, then the business people filed a lawsuit against the city in reverse because they got tired of responding to our lawsuit that we was filing against the city, right? To, to, to bring up the tents. Right, where people have a right to camp, the, the, the business improvement, I mean, the, uh, the LA Alliance, who they are, they call itself the LA Alliance for Human Rights. How the hell are you going to be the LA Alliance for Human Rights when we sued you three times in the last 20 years, too? Right. And so it, they just found the way to just backdoor, you know, by uh, uh, what the backdoor to get the city to do what they want to do by, uh, by following their own lawsuit against the city to get the city to bring down the tents. Right. It was a it was a backdoor move, just like I say. They 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 use the federal courts to serve capitalism in, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they and so um and so I mean, so all these lawsuits come out of a uh, CD14, right? Why these lawsuits come out of CD14? You look at the council members, the last three council members we had from, from Jan Perry, who supported 12 years of the uh of policing on Skier Road, uh, no, eight years of policing on Skier Road, she was council member. Uh, she supported the Safer Cities Initiative in Bratton. When you look at Jose Weizar, right, who's who just been found guilty in federal court of corruption and bribery, right, selling property to the, to, the skier, um, skier Road, uh, uh, to the Japanese, right, he just been found guilty in federal court for that. He couldn't stay away from Caesar's table. He lived on the other side. We couldn't even get a trash can out of him. You know, th you, got, you got two different downtowns. You got Skier Road and you got the new downtown, you know. And so um, uh, when you look at the council members now, Kevin DeLeon, look, he's in some corruption, you know, stuff right now. So all our council members, they can't stay away from Caesar's table. And so because they continue to go and work with the business improvement district, who's calling, 
for the criminalization of homelessness. They created a, re, uh, 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 a downtown plan called the 2020 plan a couple of dec decades ago. And it was about what they want downtown to look like in the year 2020. And it called for more police, it called for more condos, lofts, more outside eateries. It's called for less shopping carts, less homeless people, less affordable housing being built downtown. It just totally X'd us out of downtown. So the fight continue to remain right now. You know, uh, uh, the criminalization of the homeless, the homelessness done got to the point now in the city of Los Angeles, right on Skid Row, uh, when I first started these fights, it was a little less than 180 some tents on the street. Now at nighttime, it's over 2,000 tents on the streets. Uh, and that ain't counting the people that's, uh, that's on the, tent, the, uh, the, the streets. And so um, the city, you, we, uh, uh, I, 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 the city council don't, don't have a, the next step. They got like four or five committees right now that's working around homelessness, but yet they don't have an idea in next on what to do next, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they continue to, right now they, they fighting among themselves uh, you got uh, the uh, the Spanish council uh, members in a conspiracy with the black against the black council members and stuff, and so uh, and, and our council member on Skid Row is right smack in the middle of this, and so uh, we don't see nothing coming in the near future real good, and so uh, it's just a continued fight that continue to just carry on, carry on, and carry on, mm -hmm. and at the same time, five homeless people in the city of Los Angeles is dying every day. Uh, but they say five. So when they say five, you know, it's 10 or 12 folks that's dying every day, right? <laughs> and so um, um, our job is to continue to just go out on the block and organizing people right now. We got some actions planned uh, 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 in the next couple of weeks coming up. Um, right out front where I'm at, uh, 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 right in front of our office, they, you know, they plan to take us down on Monday. They come in and then sweep people out with the new uh, amendments that they came out with. And so, um, yeah, how do you hold a city accountable? This city been sued. I don't know how many times they can continue to do the same thing. They corrupted within their own politics, they self. We got uh, Mark Willie Thomas, who, who started his trial. He was the chair of the Homeless and Poverty Committee and he got busted for corruption right after Jose Weizar got. So we had two <laughs> members of the Homeless and Poverty Committee facing federal charges for corruption. So how the hell we get two members of the, of the committee that addresses poverty in the city of Los Angeles around home, because they say homeless and poverty. So they just ain't talking about homeless people. They talking about people that's poverty too. Everybody's poor, right? So, and we got two of the, the top members of this committee in fair facing federal charges. So that just show you right there just why this city is corrupted. And then LAPD, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna shut up and take some questions. LAPD uh, 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 continues to lead the nation year after year in shooting unarmed people of color particularly black and brown folks, a lot of folks who got mental disabilities. And the police station on Skid Row, Central Division, right, continues to win the meanest city award for the worstest police station in America for the way they treat home, poor and homeless people right here on Skid Row. And so um, how do you fight that? How do you keep dealing with that, right? It's all about revolution now, taking it to the next step, organizing the people and creating a serious fight back on the streets. So, and that's what we're trying to do right now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's what this is. That's what this is discussion is about. How do we stop this? Um, so do we stop I, this? I'd like to uh, uh, call back uh, Martha and uh, Melinda and uh, open the floor for questions. Uh, I think we did have a few questions that came up in the chat. Um, and we'll also take questions if people want to raise their hands electronically. You can, uh, we can uh, take your question verbally, whichever way, whichever way you want. Uh, I know one of the questions which came up a lot uh, that uh, in in relation to Moms for Housing, in relation to uh, the Reclaimers, and in relation to what you were just talking about, uh, General Doga, is what's the relationship between this? ground level organizing, this organizing on the street and even the direct actions that people take. What's the relation between that and um, these elections and the victories that people are winning in these elections? Uh, does, does the ground level uh, help the candidates and do the candidates respond to what's going on the ground? What's the relationship there? 
and any of you, please feel free to answer. So most definitely, I started off. So on the ground relationship. So most definitely here at LA Can, we are part of what we call a Black Power Network. Here's a T-shirt of what we just had. We wore and we was a part of the last election. And what it is with the Black Power Network is uh, uh, we realize that the Black vote can sometimes be the swing vote when we all get together. So we have we have what we call this Black Power Network that's hooked up all along California from, from Sacramento, all the way down to LA, all the way down to San Diego, right? And we all get together and we talk about what do we need, right? What do the poor folks need to, in this poor fight uh, movement, right? To move forward, right? And when we all vote together, we form what's called a hook right there, right? And so we can decide who go to the big house and who go to the dog house, you know what I mean? In other words. And so um, um, that's what we've been doing on the ground, fighting and most definitely for us with, with a lot of houseless people on Skid Row. Uh, Skid Row is a community that they got folks that's, that's just now getting out of jail and right, stuff like that. So a lot of people don't know their voting rights. So we most definitely letting people know, get out, let them know you have a right to vote. Uh, letting uh, homeless people know that you can still vote. Um, uh, um, letting people know what's on the ballot and encourage people to go out to vote. And then also holding these electeds accountable, you know, like uh, I don't like like Crusoe, like the last mayor Crusoe, you know, uh, I don't and, and Karen Bass. And I mean, I mean, for us, it's the it's the who's the greatest of the two evils, right? Because you got one talking about, yeah, we need 10,000 police. And then you got another one talking about, yeah, I'm going to clean up L.A. L.A. Don't need when you got people talking, about, I'm going to clean up. You know what I mean? That's that's a problem. That's a red flag right there. Right. Because L.A. don't need a cleaner, L.A. need a healing, right? And so when we talking, we're getting all these folks that's talking about we need boots on the ground and all this. So we trying to speak out against that and just make sure that we hold them accountable to what they've talked about during election time. Amen. Any any of the rest of you want to comment on that? Um, for us in Reclaiming Our Homes, uh, Benito Flores, one of the reclaimers, also created a people's contract. 